name is Carlos Cesar, and uh, we're back with one more show of uh, Neighborhood News. Uh, like I said last week, John is out at work for a few weeks, so uh, I'm going to be doing the show uh, alone with no co-host, but um, always with the uh, good guests. And if you watched the uh, last week's show, uh, we um, had um, Mr. Lee as a guest, and he just moved to Fall River. Um, to um, tell us a little bit about uh, economic development for our city. Um, this show will be aired after the meeting that, and after his presentation at the DeVol School, at the, I'm sorry, at the Fonseca School um, last, uh, last week. So, um, I, uh, if you want to know a little bit of uh, Mr. Lee, if you didn't watch last week's show, I, I invite you to, uh, um, to hear the show, so this way you will have a little bit of understanding um, uh, with the, uh, the background um, of uh, uh, our guests. And today we're going to go talk about Fall River economic development. And believe it or not, I still have so much hope because we have the tools, but we need to do the puzzle. And the tools need to fall on the right spots for us to have a perfect economic development, which uh, has been going on for many, many years in our city. The tools is going to be the same, but I think the, uh, the spots are going to be more People are going to see them better now, so the tools can fall on the right places. Um, Mr. Lee moved from, um, can I say, a great state of Georgia? <laughs> uh, actually, I'd prefer not. You can say the Atlanta area. Oh, uh, Atlanta but, area. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, he's been in town for a couple of weeks, or so three weeks now, um, and I want on his eyes been for the first time in Fall River, what can what do you see in Fall River that really inspires you for the work that you're going to be studying? Uh, okay, that's a good way of putting it, Carlos, uh, because I've, I've <laughs> been uh, wondering how to uh, begin this conversation and to keep it succinct. Um, you know, I could I could probably talk on the assets, and many of, of y'all know the the assets, the things you would talk about about Fall River and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the beauty of the bay and the hills. Uh, most people refer to history and such as that. Um, there is some history here in Fall River, um, uh, both uh, the history of events and such as that that we refer to, and uh, what people also think of as history, which are uh, the, the remnants of those, e of those events in those past generations, the buildings and things such as that. Um, uh, they, they tend to look upon that as an opportunity for tourism, generally. Um, and tourism is a legitimate industry, um, but it's not an industry, it's not the industry you, you really want to go after. Uh, because it is uh, the one of the lowest economic uh, sector, uh, lowest levels in terms of uh, uh, incomes uh, of economic sectors. Uh, the in communities uh, make that mistake of thinking that that is good money, easy money, you know, and uh, it's not always easy money, uh, and it's certainly not what I would call good money. Um, it tends to, again, uh, going back to the mill days of Fall River, in many ways, actually, it tends to just enrich a very, very small clique at the uh, expense of a, a more impoverished uh, community. So for us to talk about um, tourism being on the economic development folder, um, you see, the way you say is it's good because of the events, but it's just going to drag people, local people, to those events, not actually... When I say events, people. I'm talking about historical events, you know, by, uh, I, I'm talking about the, I mean, hi history, uh, we, we think about George Washington crossing the Delaware, you know, mm -hmm. or, or this war, or this battle, or this uh, 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 conv uh, constitutional convention or whatever, you know, 
those are those are the events in here. Then there's the the remnants, the leftovers of those, which there's maybe a building, you know, the the, uh, the beautiful uh, uh, courthouse buildings and such as that that you might see here, or school buildings and such as that, um, or wonderful homes. You know, uh, those are the the present day remnants, the visual remnants we have. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, and a lot of uh, communities tend to. Uh, uh, leap upon those things as saying, well, we can get tourists here, you know, because of this. Or in the case of Fall River, they, they, they pull an old battleship in and think that that's going to, uh, that, that's going to do it. Um, uh, it's certainly, you know, a, uh, a legit, like I said, a legitimate industry, the tourism industry, and, and really the, probably the better term is to refer to it as the hospitality industry because it encompasses um, all aspects of that, and uh, in any community, even if they have no tourist sites, they have a hospitality industry. They have some motels and restaurants and things like that, uh, and workers. But largely, the incomes in those uh, industry in that industry uh, is isn't the kind of economic development that's going to really grow uh, a region. Um, and what you're what you need to do are the typical industries that people think about: the manufacturing and the the higher level service industries and things such as that. And that's what we need to position Fall River to do. Uh, once you do that, once you grow an economy, a city, uh, th such points of interest tend to develop uh, because you have, uh, you know, uh, well-to-do people who, uh, who uh, uh, make uh, make their money in the city, and they're, you know, and they they create institutions like art museums and, and such as that, you know that then later, in later generations become points of interest that draw tourists in. So uh, uh, on, your, uh, um, on your opinion, um, it, it's not the tourist that's gonna bring people to town. It's yes, other correct. ways to bring people to town. When they're in town, now that's when tourism kicks in. You, you, will, you will have, yeah, th those, those, in, those other, uh, uh, industries, hospitality industries will 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 grow. Um, actually, you probably have. Uh, well, maybe not. You don't actually have any motels right here. You have maybe one motel in the whole in the whole city, mm -hmm. which I think is evidence of the fact that uh, uh, the past three decades or more of Fall River's attempts to be a tourist mecca have been just complete failures. Uh, you have one motel that I know of in the city. You know, maybe mm -hmm. a couple of bed and breakfast. You know, so. Um, uh, you, you almost have to let that happen on its own. Um, uh, you know, in in a hundred years from now, uh, the studio may be a historical, uh, you know, point of interest. You know, uh, yeah. or for for one reason or another, who knows? Um, you know, back then, you know, they didn't see you know Independence Hall as particularly being anything you know interesting. It was just yeah. where these people were meeting. You know, it was this little mm -hmm. convention center in Philadelphia, for that matter. And uh, today it is a it is a major you know point of interest in Philadelphia. So those things tend to uh, will take care of themselves. You can't manufacture them per se. You know, I mean, uh, Disney World and and uh, uh, Florida being you know a rare example, a uh, rare exception. Excuse me. Um, but w the tourism thing will tend to take care of itself. And Fall River has certainly a lot of. Uh, potential for that in just in terms of the beauty of the area. So uh, according to you, it is a mistake to hide uh, a tourism person <laughs> <Without> when, <laughs> when we don't have... Without a doubt, that is just <laughs> a total waste of taxpayer money. Uh, it is just futile. If you have really nothing, if you, if, you need, if you had so much tourism and so many things going on that you wanted to have someone help coordinate and direct and such as that, that's fine. Yeah, because looking the way that you explain to me now kind of makes sense because here I'm the, the, supposedly I'm going to be the tourism director. So I'm supposed to bring people to town. Uh, yes, I have the battleship for sale. I have the uh, Lazy Borden house that I can bring somebody there. But if I want to put a package together for, for family to spend four nights in Fall River, we don't have where they're going to stay. We, we don't have a hotel. So it, it's like uh, the person, the tourism director, is not going to have the tools uh, and, and to and work with. And, yeah, well, yes, and, and, and in terms of the hotels, I mean, that, uh, that's just reflective of the fact that there is no demand. You can't, 
You can't manufacture demand exactly. Um, if you know there was already demand, uh, people uh, wanted to come to Fall River. If if that one hotel that is in town, if that hotel was selling out every booked every night because there's so much demand, and they could raise their rates up to $150 a night mm -hmm. and still be booked, there would be other hotels created in Fall yeah. River. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you, the market will take care of that, and. Uh, uh, you, that's uh, that, that's going to occur, so you can't manufacture. So, I mean, it, it, um, if Fall River focuses just on tourism, it, it's it's just going to this it's just going to stay the same way it is for in another hundred years. Okay. Um, and so, what you really got to do is you got to look at uh, well, why aren't we a manufacturing center? You know, why aren't we an academic center? Why aren't we you know a research and development center? Um, because those are where the that's where the big money is these days, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, until uh, our transportation center is, is another thing. But there there are solid reasons why it's not, uh, and you have to examine those and see why. And once you understand why why a um, a uh, manufacturer of uh, Agricultural equipment, or something like that, or say, 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 say some, something more uh, that you understand more. Maybe mo a lawnmower or something. Why mm -hmm. a lawnmower manufacturer might not want to, you know, put a plant here. You know, it's it it it's not profitable. I mean, it's it's not dollars and cents. It makes no sense mm -hmm. for them to come and put a plant here. Uh, another thing that uh, probably will make sense, and I heard you talk about this before, is um, how the people is going to get here if they don't have transportation here. Whoever comes uh, to Fall River has a specifically, um, uh, you know, place to go, visit the family and get out again. But we don't have, we're not bringing people in um, for any other reason. Um, so, and, and I remember um, in one of our conversations, you telling me that the airport um, is, um, you know, a big, a big tool on economic development because that people's going to come through Fall River, um, you know, and then they will decide what to do when they in Fall River. Um, yeah, yeah, well, you're, you're uh, obviously wanting me to go launch into one of the, the major uh, opportunities that, that I did see here for Fall River, and that was, um, and you could say airport, everybody's gonna say, oh, well, we had an airport, and then, yes. you know, it was obliterated, nobody used it or anything like that. Um, well, you have to, one, you have to realize uh, what you need uh, for economic growth, and uh, there's several things I could speak of, but since you brought up the airport topic, that is definitely one of the things that will help a city grow. It's not, it's not just the effect of having a good city, which usually is what happens. Uh, once you have that asset, it be also becomes a generator you know, uh, of economic development. Um, not only that, but it in and of itself is a jobs center. Um, now, People would say, well, then how how can we have an airport? I mean, we we have Logan in, in you know in Boston. You have T G uh, T F Green over in Providence. Why would we even want to? You know, we don't have the money. Um, well, there I have seen a a, a better means for the uh, spending transit infrastructure dollars here in Massachusetts. I, I tend to find that there is a tremendous waste of transit dollar uh, transit dollar infrastructure in this state. Uh, n so much waste that you you could you could do wonderful wonderful things with that money. Um, so I do see a means for creating a regional airport um, for Bristol Plymouth counties uh, that would leverage the population center and demand for air transit uh, across the southern Boston um, metropolitan area. Uh, by positioning the airport in, in, at the right spot, you not only have some immediate demand to uh, incentivize air airline carriers to fly out of it, uh, but then it becomes uh, both 
it becomes an economic stimulus and an economic engine for uh, cities like Fall River and New Bedford and well Bristol and uh, the southern portions of Bristol and um, Plymouth counties um, because not only does it opportunity for jobs and and it, the, the airport I envisioned the size airport I envisioned in uh, by the first five years of its operations I can see easily having 5,000 jobs mm -hmm. uh, at the airport um, and um, that that is an assortment of people actually working for the airport authority people working for the airlines uh, security, and security TS uh, in the government in sector uh, car rentals you know and and by and large I'm not gonna say all of these jobs are high paying but on average these jobs are going to be well above the income average that we have in Bristol County today. Well above. Um, so that and a huge tool of and economic. then a huge tool for going and saying, you know, to a company, you know, we would like you to move to Fall River. Uh, you know, you talk about tax incentives and things like that. Certainly, that is one way to do it, and and they've been using tax incentives for residential development, which isn't necessarily really isn't an economic stimulus. Um, whereas you could go and recruit a company and you don't even have to offer tax incentives. If you can make a good business case for a company locating here, because uh, you can point to uh, certain strategic locations and certain uh, uh, transit opportunities and things like that, that's how you Create economic. That's how you, uh, you you bring companies here, uh, and that's that's who they bring the jobs here. Then you know, um, and certainly having that airport nearby instead. I mean, you can't you can't expect to uh, have uh, say a company in Europe is looking to uh, they're doing well in Europe, and they want they decided to enter the U.S. market, and so they come over here, and they think well the north northeast is a good place to start. Uh, where do we want to locate our uh, U.S. headquarters? Well, you know, Fall River says, hey, <laughs> come here. They're going to laugh at you. They're just going to laugh at you. You know, I mean, Fall, why would we be in Fall River? I mean, you know, we, we want to grow our business. You know, we want our executives to be able to fly to other parts of the U.S. and sell our product. Mm -hmm. And they just simply can't, can't do it. It's not convenient out of Fall River. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one reason Atlanta has just blossomed. You have to go back and look at the size of Atlanta what was when I was a kid, you know, and it was, it was a mil million population at best. And even then, that was, uh, it, that was good, consider, you know, considering the South in general. But it's a city of five million people now. And, uh, and that's because they, they have, they've attracted company after company after company have moved to the Atlanta area. And the number number one asset that they all point to was the fact that Atlanta had great air connections. Mm -hmm. It was easy and convenient for their executives to fly in and out and such as that. Mm -hmm. uh, so having that airport is a tremendous, tremendous asset toward building your community. And so you have, um, and you have other, and it's not just that because you could say, okay, well, um, uh, some Rehoboth or, or some place like that, they would have just as equal access to it, okay. But then you got to look at your advantages. You know, you have, and this is where you got to build your quality of life here. You know, you've mm -hmm. got to, you've got to show, you got to have quality education and you know quality recreational opportunities, and, and such as that. Um, once you do that, you you make an area an, an appealing and attractive place, mm -hmm. you know, for a company to locate. Uh, that that is so that is one of the fundamental tools, and I can get into other issues of, yeah, of so, cargo transportation later. So I, I mean I can see this uh, being a, a huge thing for, for the city, and you only talking about transportation for companies, for business people to be traveling from one point to another point. But now we have to, on top of that, we have to add the domestic flights, which on my community, the Portuguese community, we have three flights a week to the islands, mm. and they always booked. Mm. You know, out of Logan. People, exactly, I out of Logan, and sometimes they try to bring it to Providence. Mm -hmm. and, and just that move makes it $200 cheaper the flights, but to fly it, out of Providence than to, fly out exactly. of Exactly, it's a difference of two hundred dollars just because it's closer to us. 
uh, and, and well, it's, it's a it's, big demand. When you say it's a difference of two hundred dollars, it's closer. You mean it's uh, the, the the airline, the round trip uh, ticket yes. is what I'm, I assume exactly. you're referring to. Uh, is it's 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 probably uh, cheaper, maybe because it, it's less expensive for the airline to fly out of Providence. Perhaps. Exactly, uh, uh, with the tax from the airport tax and all of that, it's mm -hmm. cheaper probably. But it, it's a, it's a difference for for us if we want the flight. Number one for us, living in Fall River, right. it's a lot closer. It, yes. It's a twenty minute drive, um, and it's still two hundred dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and 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 the flights, the flights for Florida, the flights for whatever, the, you know. Um, so I can see just that alone, taking aside the business, right? Just the domestic flights, I can see a big demand uh, on flying uh, if if we could accomplish uh, a goal like that. Uh, well, it's certainly a, a benefit uh, uh, comes to uh, community. To uh, and that's that's um, makes it more appealing, uh, you know, uh, for families and things like that. You know, people to bring their families here, and if they, if they know that they can, uh, as well, you know, uh, travel leisurely, you know, at at a, a lower cost, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, even it, if not a lower cost, just more conveniently. Mm -hmm. uh, that that certainly helps. Um, uh, so, it, and it all tends to feed. Uh, uh, feedback on itself, you know, then that demand creates more. Um, Flight opportunities, you know, more direct flight connections and things like that, uh, for businesses to make use of as well. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, it 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 just has this synergy synergetic effect, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that works toward toward improving the, the life for everybody mm -hmm. and economically and, and otherwise. Let me ask you this: since everybody's talking about uh, waterfront, um, you already, I bet that you already. Um, Sit at our, our front. You look at the river. You look at the uh, um, the potential that we have on the waterfront. Um, I, I I say this: even if you start working today in developing the waterfront, it's going to take you 15 years minimum for you to have at least a good waterfront. Oh yes, um, yeah. Uh, Fall River's waterfront. I mean, as much as it's touted as oh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. Um, it's not wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, you know, there's communities all through Rhode Island have waterfront, and all through Massachusetts that have waterfront. Um, and many of them more, many of them uh, not only is, is there what is there natural views and everything like that, perhaps even better. Maybe they have uh, more wonderful historical uh, events and things like that uh, to uh, attract people from that perspective. But you know there is an opportunity down there. You know on the waterfront. You know uh, you have. This is where I love good urban spaces, mm -hmm. and forever has a great chance to have great a great urban space. Mm -hmm. um, you have the dynamism of the city, uh, the commerce, you know, the, uh, and such as that, um, the community here on the hillsides overlooking, you know, Mount Hope Bay. Mm -hmm. um, you have the opportunity to build a wonderful city on the bay. Uh, uh, and part of that is, is having a quality of life which is includes aesthetics as well, you know, and that now goes to the waterfront. The aesthetics, you know, of the waterfront uh, are today. Uh, it's not a place that I would bring people to uh, if I had family visiting here or, some, or friends visiting here. That's not the first place I would be taking people down to. Um, uh, you have this viaduct overhead. <laughs> Uh, uh, going, you know, o hovering over you, um, that is just reminiscent of, you know, the uh, the subway viaducts in New York City or something like that. I mean, being, it, it, it's just you're, you're not, you're ignoring to me this big elephant yes. uh, in the room yes. that is that is, a, is an unpeeling, you know, uh, position, and and you you've got but, but to he, he is deal the, with that. He is the the point that you seen that elephant with wrong eyes, because for us it's a beautiful elephant there, <laughs> and as long as we the bad thing is we're not keeping up painting this 
elephant every 20 years and take us 20 years to paint it. Yeah. Uh, so it's like construction going on there. It's, it's teenagers now that never saw that elephant all open and done. You know, it's, so that's, that's how yeah. much. So, but we don't, it's there, but we're not even acknowledging that because we're so used to. It's, exactly. You, exactly. We're so used to. But you come From in and you say, that's a big, that's a big thing right there. You know, and, and, and that will happen if our economic development person goes out of the city into a different states and sees what's in there with eyes uh, 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 to bring it to Fall River, you know. And I have said that, and I, I keep repeating myself: Fall River will never develop if the person in charge will not leave Fall River. And the waterfront, what's going on with the waterfront? We're spending so much money, we're cleaning up everything. But it's only two people in town that's going to build in a waterfront. If you don't leave Fall River into outside people to come and, and build something on the waterfront. So we're spending the money, we're cleaning up, but we already know who's going to build on the waterfront. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when you say build on the waterfront, I don't know if you're referring to building a residential Building restaurants, or building, if, building uh, you know, whatever they want to do. I have no idea, idea yeah. what the plan well, is. You can't, um, you've got to have demand for stuff. Um, and if you don't have uh, demand for uh, residential, if, if you don't have people wanting to move here, live here, you have no reason to build housing here. You mm -hmm. know, if you don't have people coming here wanting to, and, and enough disposable income in, in the community to mm -hmm. uh, to support the nice uh, shops and things like that that you might have uh, mm -hmm. on Newberry Street in, in Boston. You know? Yes, yeah. Uh, I mean, you're not anywhere close to ever having a Newberry Street here because there is just not the disposable income in Fall mm -hmm. River. Uh, not even it's, it's Bristol County is uh, second to last in terms of uh, per capita income mm -hmm. in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, and uh, until you deal with the economic side, you're not going to uh, grow the disposable income in the city so that you have the nice shops. Retail, you got to, you've got to understand this, retail is not economic development. It's just not. Retail, uh, the consumer side of things, that is, that is, that is the, the, um, the roots of a tree sucking water you know, out of the area around it, okay. Mm -hmm. um, that is, uh, that's money going out of the community, generally speaking. Um, uh, economic commonwealth, and there's a term, you know, here, it's used the commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, we can look at, talk about the common, local, with little c, the local commonwealth here. And economic development is about really bringing more money in than you have going out. Mm -hmm. Okay, well retail, for the most part, you know, if you wanted to say, oh, let's get a Home Depot here, okay, and that's economic development. No, it's not. Um, no, I mean, the, the, the profits, you know, going, you know, that that store makes is going to stockholders, you know, a lot, most of them in Atlanta, you know, because that's, that's where Home Depot started. Mm -hmm. uh, it was two fellows who came down from, I think, oh, Jersey and New York and um, uh, saw and had an idea and thought Atlanta was a great place to, to develop this idea. And uh, most of the early stockholders uh, are in Atlanta area, and those are the people who, who that, that is how wealth is built in the community. Well, and um, it's uh, and, and a half an hour flight again, and uh, it's so much to talk about economic development, but uh, I bet we will bring you on again sometime. Thank, Thank you. you.